The problem is I think postmodernism has to a large extent run its course. David Foster Wallace is known for being one of the most influential writers in recent history. Before taking his own life in 2008, he decried the negative effects postmodernism had on his generation. Postmodernism is a very wide-ranging term used to analyze our world that emerged in the 1950s and 60s. It rejected the grand narratives that exist in modernism, things like there is one true God, history is progress, and peace on earth. In postmodern thought, there is no scientific, philosophical, or religious truth which will explain everything for everybody. It lacks that optimism. Instead, everything is understood on a micro level. Knowledge and truth are contextual and constructed. Reality only comes into existence through our interpretations of what the world means to us individually. Thus, postmodernism is characterized by self-referentiality, such as a character who knows their character in a novel or film, by moral relativism, and by cynicism and irony. With that in mind, here's Wallace again. The, the problem, though, is now is that a lot of the shticks of postmodernism, irony, cynicism, irreverence, are now part of whatever it is that's enervating in the culture itself, right? Wallace's biggest concern was with the dominant cultural force of television, which he believed had become too saturated with these postmodern characteristics. TV's response to dumb and overly sentimental sitcoms was irony. TV shows began criticizing themselves for being dumb TV shows. This can't be happening. We have to see this movie, dude. Ah, oh, screw it. It probably isn't all that good anyway. Cartman, what are you talking about? You love Terrence and Phillip. Yeah, but the animation's all crappy. It's hard to criticize a show that criticizes itself first. Shows became more self-referential and self-deprecating. In short, they took nothing seriously. And there's a problem with this in Wallace's mind. Irony has no redemptive qualities in and of itself. It can point out problems and deconstruct things, but it offers no solution. It's like a rebel dethroning a tyrant only to become a better tyrant. Take for example Seinfeld's ironic critique of the sitcom. Every character's very human problems are laid bare, but they're presented as unsolvable. Whereas earlier, more sugary sitcoms might offer a solution through family, friends, or hobbies, Seinfeld gives you nothing. That's not a redeeming formula. It's a cynical one. Family Guy's use of irony is slightly different, but no more redeeming. It makes ironic connections to history, celebrity, stereotypes, you name it. But it cares more about the number of connections it can make, rather than providing any lessons or challenging any principles with them. It simply uses irony to reassure us of our knowledge of cultural discourse. You've got Saturday Night Live's deconstruction of cynicism, Arrested Development's superficial relationships, It's Always Sunny's irredeemable characters, and in Wallace's time, all of these shows. The ironic mode shows up in advertising all the time. Here are 20 ads making fun of themselves for being ads. Hello, I'm an actor. I've been paid $8,000 to tell you how great Nordnet is compared to other banks. To Wallace, TV's unabashed self-deprecation and deconstruction of our culture, the idea that everything is fabricated, was corrosive to the soul. Hip cynical transcendence of sentiment is really some kind of fear of being really human. He thought we'd find a solution in shifting television's overall tone away from one of cynical irony to one of sincerity. And no doubt this tonal shift is occurring in some spheres of pop culture and has been for the last decade. It's due in part to David Foster Wallace himself and likely to a general cultural shift away from cynicism in general. It's interesting to see how this tonal shift has affected TV comedies. Some of comedy's greatest tools are characteristically postmodern. So how have these combined with sincerity to change American humor? It all starts in 2006 with The Office. Then in 2009, the tonal shift towards sincerity continued with Community, Modern Family, and Parks and Recreation. They all have similarities to their postmodern predecessors, but instead of the blank parody of Family Guy, the superficiality of Arrested Development, or the cynicism of Seinfeld, they have a heart. They have redeeming characters who have a sincere yearning for meaning and human connection. The Office is full of redemptive people looking for human affirmation. Any irony in the show is balanced with earnest sentimentality. Take for example Jim and Pam's romantic chemistry. Their connection relies on a hyper-awareness and mutual ironic detachment from The Office. It's not just irony for irony's sake. It has that addition of a sincere human relationship attached to it. Indeed, rarely does a show use irony at the expense of a character ever. In one episode, a recently dumped Andy tries to talk Jim out of being with Pam, and Jim responds to him ironically. It's so scary 
how right the things you're saying are. And you're coming at it with almost no knowledge, so of course I trust your opinion on this. Andy reads Jim's ironic comment as sincere, and for the rest of the day believes he's genuinely taking on all of Jim's emotional troubles, even though Jim's perfectly happy with his relationship. At the end of the episode, one of Andy's co-workers reveals the joke. I think Jim is messing with you. But instead of judging or belittling Andy for the postmodern crime of being naive in the face of irony, Jim uses the occasion to teach Andy a sincere lesson. That stuff that happened with you and Angela is a bummer. And I know that you don't think you're ever gonna find someone else, but you will. I promise you, you will. Jim's ironic stance ends with him delivering a sentiment upholding American romantic ideals. Much like The Office, Community balances its pop culture references and ironic moments with characters who sincerely desire human connection. The title of the show tells us this outright. It's about how and why we come together and form communities with other people. And even when it parodies and deconstructs TV tropes like the jock, it does so in an uplifting way, turning the all-star quarterback into one of the most caring people on the show. And despite its frequent cynicism, Community tells us that no matter how isolated and alone you may think you are, we need other people around us in order to function. It doesn't matter if it's a bunch of outcasts, they can still come together through their shared similarities and the ways they conflict with each other as well. The show, at its core, believes in common human dignity and communal integrity. It's a sincere, anti-nihilistic message you won't get from these shows. Then there's Parks and Recreation, which contains very few postmodern characteristics. You won't find the show making fun of itself. There's no meta humor. It avoids a cynical tone entirely. Ultimately, it's a show about good people trying to do good things. Leslie Nope and Ron Swanson have an entirely different idea of civic duty. You have the hope and naivete of government embodied in Leslie, and the pessimism and deconstruction of government embodied in Ron. This relationship is ripe for a sort of Seinfeldian resentment and cynicism, but Ron and Leslie have a mutual respect for each other, and they have a good friendship. Both are awesome, both are flawed, and the show constantly goes back and forth between them without taking a side. Andy and April are very similar. Both are great, but one is ultra-sincere and the other cynical. We see every character's ideology, but never fully embrace or discredit their stance. Sure, the show is about bureaucratic conflict, but it's also about how disparate people in a town connect. The show's overall tone, that cynical thinking isn't the smartest or coolest, makes a dramatic shift away from postmodernism. This wave of earnestness in TV comedy shows no sign of slowing down. Part of the reason Jon Stewart was successful for so long was that he had an unwavering sincerity behind the irony in The Daily Show. Two of his major successors understand that balance. The best shows of our age aren't finding the humor in the gaps that have developed between people. They find the humor in the absurd and awkward attempts by people trying to bridge those gaps. They want to show us that humans can have real connections and sincerity for each other. It's not impossible, it's just really fucking hard. Postmodern thought, with its deconstruction of everything and its emphasis on individual interpretation, leads us down a road of narcissism, cynicism, and detachment. To fix it, we need not appeal to something as abstract or dangerous as the grand narratives of modernism. To feel less lonely, it's perhaps this non-ideological pursuit of getting along, of striving to have strong communal integrity, valuing others for their human dignity, unabashedly enjoying the things we find to be awesome, and as David Foster Wallace would say, making it okay to be unavoidably sentimental and naive and goo-prone and generally pathetic that might help us find a greater sense of meaning and optimism in our lives. These shows tell us that strict adherence to cynicism isn't all that smart or cool, and that perhaps we learn more about what it means to be human by embracing life and the different people around us. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I had an absolute blast making that video. Uh, I don't always make videos like that. I like to make comedy content as well. Uh, but I try to keep the quality as high as possible on my channel. And if that is something you would like to support, I have a Patreon page where you can go and pledge uh, $3 or $1. Really, any amount helps me create more content. I would really like to make videos full time. So any uh, support, I'm very appreciative for. Uh, and yeah, uh, come back next Thursday for another video.